Hi booktube, Aaron here, hope you're doing okay. Today I'm going to be wrapping up uh, the books I read in July and I'll be going through my plans for August and um, before I get into that I do have um, a couple of books to haul. Uh, I know recently I said that I wasn't planning on picking up any books but these were just books that for one reason or another just seemed a little irresistible. Uh, the first one is Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino, um, a writer that I've read a little bit of. I've read his uh, Cosmo comics. And yeah, there's just something very curious and intriguing to uh, Italo Calvino. And uh, this is um, Marco Polo um, sort of telling stories about uh, all these uh, imaginary impossible cities um, uh, in a kind of dialogue with Genghis Khan. Um, so I'm really intrigued by this, um, but I'm thinking I might get to this maybe in September and I might do, if not a deep dive, then a uh, at least a substantial submersion into uh, Italo Calvino and I'll also read um, If on a Winter's Night, A, a Traveller, uh, which I've had sitting around for a while and I, I just haven't found the right time or been in the right mood to get to it. So. Um, I might read both of those back to back in September if I'm in the mood. And then the other thing, it's a, it's a poetry anthology um, and it's something that's been on my radar for a while. I can remember seeing um, when it was first about to come out, uh, sort of reading about it and it, it, it sounded really interesting uh, right up my street. And um, so it's an anthology put out by Carcanet Press, edited by James Keary called Apocalypse, um, and it's an anthology of British and Irish um, apocalyptic poetry, so that's um, specifically poetry from the sort of mid-20th century, um, and it is apocalyptic in tone, or um, it also includes poets who were described at that time as neo-romantic, so um, uh, Probably the most famous is Dylan Thomas, um, and th there are a few famous poets in here. Um, I know um, Larkin and, and Kingsley Amos are in here, which I found surprising, since um, both of them being kind of movement poets, they pretty much killed off apocalyptic and neo romantic poetry in in Britain in the fifties. Um, but you know, towards the end, it's got Sylvia Plath. Uh, Jeffrey Hill, uh, Ted Hughes um, in it. Um, it's got a poet who, at least from the introduction, sounds really interesting, called Rosemary Tonks. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to her. Um, and it's got some, some poets that I've come across um, in my anthology of British surrealist poetry, like um, David Gascon, who I, I really quite like, and he translated a lot of European uh, surrealist poetry and I think w one of the things I like specifically about Gascon but I think what kind of lures me towards apocalyptic and neo-romantic poetry in Britain when looking at this period um, is that a lot of the poetry that is very American or British feeling um, in this kind of modernist period is very um, ironic and um, sometimes it seems almost clinical um whereas um, a lot of these poets and specifically david gascon um, i read in the introduction of this really described himself as a european in his sensibility and in his um poetry um, and so he saw um uh, rilke and uh Holdelin and uh, rambo and Baudelaire as his forebears rather than T.S. Eliot or whoever. So that, that was really quite interesting. Um, but anyway, this is this is something I'll be reading in, in August. Uh, so a little spoiler for you. Um, and we'll just see how it goes. And it's got plenty of poets I've read before and enjoyed. Plenty of poets I have wanted to get to. Um, so it'll be a good way to sample them as well. So let's get into what I read in July. I finished five books and I've been working on a couple of other books. Um, the first book that I finished was The Castle 
by Franz Kafka. And I'll try not to talk about any of these books too much, um, but I, I didn't do many um, sort of reading updates in July. So um, I want to try and at least say something about each book. Um, but th this is, I found it hilarious, <laughs> um, but it's kind of hilarious um, in just how infuriating it is um, because it is just portraying a really infuriating situation uh, with this guy called Kay who's turned up at a town uh, he's a total stranger to the area um, and he's turned up to um, do land surveying work um, and he's been told he has to report to the castle and so all he really wants to do is get to the castle get to the people who have appointed him and just find out what the work is that he's supposed to be doing and we're told that there's so, there's so much riding on this for him personally uh, that he can't turn away from it. He has to complete this job. Um, but with the way that things work in this town and in the castle, um, kind of through bureaucracy, but also in a kind of almost an invisible supernatural power, he just can't get to the castle. Things just keep getting in his way. Um, and it's just absurd, but, but brilliant. Um, definitely not a starting place for Kafka. Um, but it's just one of those things that when I was reading it, I was just totally in, a, in another world and just loving every second of it. Um, so I think if you've got a little bit of Kafka under your belt, then maybe give it a go. I haven't read the trial yet, so that's the next on my list for Kafka. Um, a couple of things I read on my Kindle. I read... Um, King Lear by William Shakespeare for the first time and I think I was saying recently that um, quite often with Shakespeare um, I'll read a play for the first time and I'll just think it's the, the best thing I've ever read in my life um, and so I am kind of thinking that King Lear might be my new favourite Shakespeare play but I'm gonna read and reread a few more uh, Shakespeare plays um, hopefully later on this year um, and we'll see how that goes. One of the nice things with King Lear was that um, uh, I, I decided to reread it straight after the first read through just to get sort of plot details and specifics of character relations and things just a little straighter in my head um, and that way around I was able to concentrate on the language that much more the second time through um, but really loved it both times through um, so um, yeah I certainly wasn't tired of it by the end um, and, and also not a totally hopeless play there's lots of uh, betrayal and death and injury in there um, but that I think there is uh, just a little slither of hope in King Lear as well which I really loved um, I also read or I, I finished off the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius um, and it's part of a probably now dormant project of mine to try and read more philosophy just to get a better idea of it. Um, I, I, I think I prefer some of the ideas of philosophy um, to actually reading the philosophers. Um, so um, I mean I, yeah th there were bits I enjoyed with Marcus Aurelius um, and I definitely appreciate having read it, and I might return to it again. Um, but in, in terms of actually what he's saying, um, at least for me, I think he's a little too self-reliant. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's just incredibly naval gazy, isn't it? Uh, but I do think um, that level of um, self-scrutiny is is useful. Um, so just the act of what he's doing is very important. Um, I also read the, the Penguin book of Haiku, uh, which is really interesting. I got a really um, sort of good idea from the introduction of the history of Haiku. Um, from what I understand, it's actually a relatively new poetic form. Um, like certainly the sonnets, the villanelle, the, the sestina, those sorts of modes in uh, Western poetry. They're all um, older by 100, 200 years. Um, which is interesting um, and um, there's also a lot of really raunchy uh, haiku in here um, and to, to, I mean some of them 
you know, there's some fairly funny wordplay and stuff. Um, but after a while, it just begins to feel like you're reading graffiti in a bathroom. <laughs> and, you know, it's just about as impressive as uh, giggly 12 year olds uh, in the schoolyard. It's, it's just um, it just gets very bland very quickly. Um, and so there were some really lovely moments in here. But um, yeah, it was a bit mixed, um, but certainly the kind of scholarly side of it and the introduction to um, um, to the form and its history was really, really fascinating and really eye opening. So um, it was yeah a mixed experience, but there was plenty of, of good stuff to take away from it. Um, and then the last thing I finished, and I think this is certainly the most delightful thing that I read in, um, <laughs> what month was it? July, uh, was um, volume one of The Complete Moomin by uh, Tove Janssen. And I only meant to read one of the comic strips in here. So there are four comic strips in this volume. So we've got Moomin and the Brigands, um, which opens brilliantly with um, <laughs> uh, Moomin and Sniff. Um, and Moomin is complaining that he has to look after all of his relatives um, and it yeah it just sort of becomes a mad adventure with with Stiff and Moomin um, on a bit of a get rich scheme um, then it's got Moomin and family life Moomin finds his long lost parents and they get up to some antics as well um, uh, there's also Moomin uh, on the Riviera. Let's find the little title page for that. So we've got Moomin on the Riviera, where the Moomin family decide to go down to the Riviera and stay in a really posh hotel. Um, they don't quite understand how hotels work. <laughs> um, I think this was my favourite. They meet this guy. Uh, there he is having his, his lunch. Um, and really, he just wants to be a bohemian and make his art and live in a hut and drink sour wine and then he experienced a bit of that, of that life with the Moomin family. And he he re quickly realises that it, it doesn't match up with his constitution. Uh, but it, it was really fun, uh, that one. I think that was my favourite. And then there was Moomin's Desert Island, where they go on a disastrous helicopter trip and end up on a desert island, which was fun as well. Um, I only meant, uh, I, I read all of this last night, um, I only meant to read one comic strip, but just the the random, <laughs> kind of surreal nature of uh, Janssen's sort of humour um, and just the kind of heartwarming elements of the story as well um, quickly um, just attracted me and just made me want to keep going. I also just love lots of the little details, um, like uh, on on this strip here, we've got the gutter as the border for the panel and the same thing in this one here with a hose pipe um, I thought that was just great um, and there are these little birds that often follow them around um, there we are um, so you might see them there uh, just one of them um, just helping with bits and bobs um, <laughs> and in, in one of the comics I can't remember how far through or exactly where it was um, uh, th this guy here um, says to his cousin Shadow, uh, will you take over for me? I've got to get married. <laughs> and he just walks off and they swap places. Um, and it's, it's just so weird, but I love it. Um, and I've been I've been listening to a lot of The Goon Show um, the past few weeks as well. And it's got a very similar, goofy, surreal kind of humour. Um, so um, I think it was just the right time to read this. Um, but kind of sad, this is all the Moomin I've got, uh, so I'll just have to reread these until I can get volume two. And that's everything I've finished in July. Um, I have been working on some other things, some chunkier things, um, so that's why I haven't got um, a lot more finished. But I mean, five books is uh, certainly a, yeah, that's a very good number, really, for me. Um, but again, it comes as no surprise that I've been reading Proust. Um, and I'm on the last volume now, so in, in July I, f I finished two volumes. I read uh, The Captive and The Fugitive, uh, which both tie in together very nicely. 
um, and it feels like things are really coming together a lot of the themes that um, he's been um, thinking about and sort of mulling over are becoming clearer and are coming together and it, the characters are developing in really interesting ways plot lines are coming together and it's really interesting so I'm, I'm currently um, about 50 pages into Time Regained, the, the last uh, volume. So um, in August, I'll be trying to make headway on this and hopefully I'll be finishing Proust in August, which will be good. Um, but I think it will feel like the end of an era. Um, <laughs> I might have to go into a period of mourning uh, after I've finished reading Proust. Um, and then I also picked up, because one really, really big book isn't enough, um, I picked up Richard Zenith's Pessoa, An Experimental Life. Um, so it's a big thousand page biography of Fernando Pessoa. Um, and I've been keeping this mainly as a weekend book. Um, we'll see if I carry on in that vein. Um, I'm about 200 pages through. And um, it's, been, it's been really good so far, really fascinating. And, it's, um, and, and Zenith has been going into... Um, just the politics and the history going on as he's growing up as well. Um, so when he's first born, he's painting a really vivid picture of um, of Portugal and uh, specifically Lisbon at the end of the uh, 19th century. And then they move down to Durban or Durban in uh, South Africa. Um, and he, he paints a really vivid picture of that and all the tensions um, as the, the Boer War is, is looming. And it was really, really interesting, that section. And now he's back in Lisbon, uh, just as there's um, <laughs> a revolution kicking off uh, or, or something like that, I think. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward. And it's, you know, you've got all that outside stuff, but you've also got this exploration of Pessoa's interior, which is really the kind of meat of, of the book since um, his imaginary dream world was so much a part of his um, day-to-day life. Um, and then two things I've been dipping in and out of, and, and they're kind of what inspired me getting that um, anthology um, of apocalyptic poetry. Uh, so as I said, I've been reading a little of W.S. Graham, um, and I read his uh, long poem, The Night Fishing, um, which was really, really good. It's um, w- when I first discovered W.S. Graham, it was just one of those things, uh, one of those first poems that really intrigued me and got me thinking that I was reading something really special. Um, And I also just flipped through to a few of my favourite poems. And something I think I'll be doing um, is I'm I'm just going to tick off some of the poems um, that that I read this year um, and uh, I'll just see how many I get through. Um, so it's not going to be a, a full-on read-through, but eventually I'll see them all ticked off and I'll know I've read the whole book again. Um, so I, I might do that. And I'm going to do something similar as well with Dylan Thomas as well, um, since they're two poets who, who, at least to me, seem quite linked. Um, and certainly from reading the introduction uh, to that uh, anthology of apocalyptic poetry, just the influence that Dylan Thomas had on, on British poetry from uh, the 30s through to the 60s, really, was really tremendous. Um, and so um, yesterday, so it was uh, Saturday uh, for me as I'm filming, um, I um, just woke up, um, <laughs> put a lamp on and grabbed Dylan Thomas and just read Dylan Thomas in bed for an hour, which... It's unusual for me. I don't normally read in bed, but I thought it'd be a nice, a nice way to start the day on a Saturday. And I think when I can, I'm going to try and make that into a bit of a Saturday um, sort of weekend ritual where possible. Um, and that's pretty much everything I've been reading in July. So a few things finished, a few bigger things that are going to take some time to finish and a few things I've been dipping in and out of where possible. Um, and then... Um, for my August reading plan, so we've obviously I'll be finishing Proust, hopefully I'll hopefully be finishing that um, Pessoa biography by Richard Zenith as well. Um, and then there are, and I'll, and I'll be finishing off hopefully that 
um, anthology as well, the Apocalypse anthology. Um, three other things that I want to read. Um, I'm going to be taking part, joining in, in uh, Faulkner in August. So this year they're reading Absalom, Absalom, uh, which I've never read. So I'm looking forward to that. I've really enjoyed Faulkner before in the past. Um, uh, um, Light in August is one of my favourite novels. And uh, I really quite liked As I, As I Lay Dying as well. Um, but that's almost all I've read of Faulkner. I've also read uh, Go Down Knows It. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting into this. Um, and we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Um, It'll be interesting reading this and trying to make progress on Proust at the same time. I think they both they both require a lot of headspace, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then I've got two books that are kind of conditional. So if I finish Proust, I will pick up uh, Between the Woods and the Water by Patrick Lee Fermer. So this is the second book in his series where he's walking from the Hook of Holland to Constantinople. Uh, the first was a time of gifts, and I just love that so much. So, I've been I've been itching just to get back to Fermat, just because I, I love the idea of this journey, and um, but I also just love his writing and his just attitude to to life and to traveling as well. Um, and then if I finish the uh, Pessoa biography, um, then I will uh, try to start making some progress on Sir Thomas Brown's major works and um, I might come to this um, a little like um, W.S. Graham where I will I'll just choose whatever essay strikes me as most interesting at any given time and uh, just tick them off and treat it like that and um, so we'll see but um, I'll, I'll try and read at least a little Sir Thomas Brown if I finish the Pessoa biography. And there we go. I will leave it there. Um, I'm, I'll, I won't go through my updates on my sort of reading challenges and things that I've been doing. Um, I'll try to remember to do that at the end of August. Uh, but for now, that, that's everything. Um, I hope July has been a, a good uh, reading month for you. Uh, for me, it, it, I don't know. I, I managed to get a lot of reading done by, by pages. Uh, but the month just seems to have gone by so quickly. Um, yeah, I <laughs> don't know what was happening there. Um, but anyway, um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.